Hello and welcome to Talent Sprint again. We now move on to a different subject in the banking segment. This time we shift our focus from deposit accounts to a borrowing account, to a loan account. And one of the most common forms of loan which is granted is a cash credit account. A bank grants a cash credit account as a loan, as a loan to the customer and it's a type of short-term loan provided by the bank to, co to companies to fulfill their working capital requirement. The key words here are that it is a short-term requirement. It's a short-term loan. It is not a long-term loan, which means that a cash credit is a short-term loan provided by banks to companies to fulfill their working capital requirement. Working capital requirement. These are the three key words to understand as far as a cash credit uh, uh, account goes. A cash credit is a short-term loan. That means that every year the cash credit account has to be renewed. It is not that it can continue perpetually or it is not granted for a 10-year or a 15-year period at once. It is a short-term loan which means that it is granted on a year-to-year -year basis and it is provided to companies to fulfill their working capital requirements. What is working capital requirements means that is the amount of money required by the companies to carry on their day-to-day -day working so that their day-to-day -day working does not suffer. That is called a cash credit. A cash credit is given against hypothecation of raw materials, work in process, finished goods and receivables. These are the different assets which a company can have normally. One is they can have a raw material, uh, for example, a, a company which manufactures tires, for example. I'm just giving you an example. It could be anything, but still the example remains valid. A company manufacturing tires, the raw material is rubber. So the cash credit loan is given against the hypothecation of this raw material called rubber. Or it could be work in process. Work in process means semi-finished item. For example, before a tire is made, it, it goes through different processes and it, at a different stage of the process, the, the product is in different stages of production. So this is called a work in progress or a work in process and the, the, the product at that time is called a semi-finished product. And once it is finished, then it is taken to the godown and kept as a finished product before it is sold. So it is a finished product. So raw materials, semi-finished products and finished products are all lying with the company. They have not reached the customer still. So a cash credit account is given against hypothecation, hypothecation of raw materials, semi-finished products and finished goods. And once these finished goods leave the com com company's hands and go to the customer, the company raises a bill on the customer. So the customer may or may not pay immediately. Some customers, the retail customers will of course pay immediately. But the bulk customers may say that because of the bulk orders we are placing with you, we would want a credit period. And that credit period could anywhere extend between uh, 15 days to 45 days to 60 days to even 180 days in some cases. So the, they are called the receivables. Receivables are the bills drawn by the company which are not yet paid for by the customer. Those are called the receivables. And so the customer as can uh, uh, actually ask for a loan from the bank against the security of the receivables from the bank. So the bank gives hypothecation of raw materials, work in process and finished goods and also against security of receivables by the customers. What are the features of a bank uh, cash credit account? In a deposit account, if you have money, let's say if you have a balance of 1 lakh rupees in your account, you can withdraw up to that 1 lakh rupees. Similarly, when a loan is granted to a customer, there is a limit set against his loan, which means that the cash credit could be for a limit of up to, let us say, 25 lakh rupees. 25 lakh rupees is the amount of money which the bank can lend to the customer at any point in time. Or to put it in a different way, 25 lakh rupees is the amount of money which the customer can borrow from the bank at, at any point in time according to a predefined limit. This is very important. It is according to a predefined limit. The bank assesses the needs of the customer in different ways. 
the bank assesses the needs of the customer in a way which is known as the credit appraisal system. What is the customer eligible for as a credit? What is his line of activity? What, is, what, is, what are his requirements of raw materials? How much of stock will he have of raw materials, of finished goods and semi-finished goods? What will be the amount of receivables for him at any point in time? Taking into account all these factors, the bank will, uh, the bank will set a predefined limit for the customer. And that limit is valid for a period of one year from the date of sanction. That is called the working capital limit set to the customer. And this limit may be 25 lakh rupees. The one distinguishing feature of a cash credit account is that the withdrawal of money is not restricted to the balance in his cash credit account, but up to a predetermined limit. In other words, the predefined or predetermined limit could actually be 25 lakh rupees. It does not mean that the customer should withdraw all his 25 lakh rupees at the same time. He can withdraw as and when he wants. He can withdraw either in cash or make payments to third parties. He can make payment of wages. He can make payment of salaries. He can make payment of utility bills like electricity, power and water. He can make uh, payment of bills to his suppliers, to his transporters, to various people. And all these added together may not be reaching that limit of 25 lakhs at all times. In other words, the, although the limit could be 25 lakhs at any point in time or the limit agreed upon is 25 lakhs, the balance could actually be much lower than that. It cannot be, of course, higher. The, uh, uh, the bank will normally not allow overdrawing of limits, but it can be only up to that particular point in time. So, uh, I mean, that particular point of money. So, which means that the uh, balance in the account may not be 25 lakhs, it could be actually even lower. For example, if he has withdrawn already 15 lakh rupees, not necessarily by cash, but, but by the other various modes which I told you, he still has got a balance of 10 lakh rupees in his account. That, that, uh, that 10 lakhs he is eligible to withdraw from his account. That is called the withdrawal against the predetermined limit. Which means, as I told you, the balance can be well below the predetermined limit at that time limit, at that particular point of time. Cash credit account basically functions like a current account with a checkbook facility. The only difference is that in a current account, the amount of money which the customer can issue checks for is limited to his balance in the account. It cannot be overdrawn normally. In a cash credit account, the amount of money which he can draw is determined by the pre-agreed limit which he has with the which he has with the bank. Very important point to note here is how does a cash credit limit operate? The cash credit limit cash credit limit is supposed to be equal to the working capital requirement of the company less the margin funded by the company itself. Now, what is the margin is what we have to see why a margin is insisted upon and what is a margin a margin is nothing but the company's stake in the activities of the company or a margin is nothing but the company's stake in the loan for example the as per the credit appraisal limits which i was mentioning a few minutes earlier if the customer has got a predetermined limit of 25 lakh rupees the bank has agreed to give him 25 lakh rupees against the hypothecation of raw materials, semi-finished goods, finished goods and receivables. If the bank gives the entire 25 lakh rupees, then the customer will have no stake at all, which means that the customer may not be interested in running the business in the way he should run the business because he, his money is not at stake. The entire money is that of the bank. Then he can simply do a wrong way of running the business and the entire loss will be passed on to the bank. That is why the bank insists that out of that 25 lakhs, you give a certain portion of that money as your margin. Margin is nothing but the company's stake in the loan. Let's say the margin is 20%. That means out of the 25 lakhs, 20% 20 of that 25 lakh, which is 5 lakh rupees, has to be given by the uh, customer. In other words, the value of the goods hypothecated, the value of the raw materials and uh, semi-finished goods, finished goods and receivables hypothecated to the bank must be 25 lakhs plus another 5 lakhs. 
then only the customer can withdraw 25 lakh rupees account that is called the margin that is called the margin which the customer has to give so in other words the margin cannot be wished away by the customer it is a margin is a way of keeping the customer interested in running the affairs of the company properly that is the most important thing so the work cash credit limit is supposed to be the working capital limit of the company minus the margin which the company provides itself does the cash does the cash credit account come free does the loan come free i'm sure all of you will agree that net, nothing comes free in life the least of the things which comes in free in life is the loan whether you take it from your friend or relative or your uh, brother or sister it could be even or from a bank any loan always comes with an interest so cash credit is a type of a loan and so the bank charges interest on the amount utilized and not on the amount sanctioned very important to understand here again that the cash credit interest is charged on the amount utilized and not on the amount sanctioned the two are different as i told you as i told you uh, earlier it could be that the cash credit limit is 25 lakhs but he has drawn only 15 lakhs which means that interest will be charged only on that 15 lakhs and not on that 25 lakhs 25 lakhs is only a pre sanctioned limit so until the pre sanctioned limit is reached in full the interest cannot be charged in full either so when the bank charges uh, interest at a predetermined rate it will be only on the amount drawn and not on the amount determined as a pre sanctioned limit that is very very important to remember you will not be charged interest uh, for undrawn balances the first sentence which i told you about cash credit is that it's a short term loan to that extent the cash credit is repayable on demand it is not a term loan it is not a term loan which can be repaid at the end of 15 years 20 years and so on we will in the later videos di differentiate between what is a demand loan and what is a term loan cash credit is a loan which is repayable on demand that means if the bank is not satisfied with the uh, affairs of running the with the uh, way the uh, way the affairs of the company are run it can call back the amount so a cash credit is repayable on demand when the value of goods or services hypothecated go down the permissible the permissible limits also goes down is very clear to understand that the limit is directly and irrevocably linked to the amount of goods and services which are hypothecated to the bank it is linked irrevocably linked to the value of the raw material semi finished goods finished goods and receivables which are hypothecated to the bank and once when the value of that comes down the limit also comes down in other words for example let me give you an example let us take the the the, the value of the receivables of a, of a particular company is 1 crore and let us say the predetermined limit of cash credit account fixed for that company is 10 crores that 10 crores has been arrived at after a proper credit appraisal take into account what will be the value of the hypothecated raw materials finished goods semi finished goods and receivables let us say all these put together the along with the margin along with the margin which the company has to provide for the limit comes to 10 crores let us assume for example for hypothetically let us assume that the entire 1 crore of money is received by the company on one particular day in the form of one particular receive uh, uh, in the form of one particular check just for example it may not happen in real life but i am just giving you giving a hypothetical example that this 1 crore is received by the company as payment by a single check or by single transfer on on a single day which means that at the end of that day there will be no receivables receivable by the company because the entire 1 crore has come which means that automatically the limit of the cash credit will come down because this 1 crore money has a 1 crore receivable has come that means the hypothecation of the receivable does not exist anymore and that's the reason why the 1 crore money why why the 1 crore uh, receivable which has been received in full will not be taken into account by the bank while computing the limit as on that particular day and that is called the drawing power or what we normally uh, use in banking as called the dp 
drawing power. Please do not confuse DP with display picture. That is what we all, we all tend to do these days. The cash credit limit, when we say DP, it is called the drawing power. Drawing power is nothing but the value of the goods hypothecated less margin. That is called the drawing power. So that means when the value of the goods comes down, the, man, the margin requirements also comes down, the limit which is allowed also comes down. That means the drawing power also comes down. That means the company cannot draw its original limit because the value of hypothecated goods has already come down. That is how, that's why we say when the value of the goods are hypothecated or receivables come down, then the permissible limit also reduces. On the con, on, this is, this is uh, a case what I just explained to you was when the receivables have come and so the value of hypothecated goods come down, then the limits also come down. The contrary could also happen. It could also happen that after the preset limit is sanctioned, the value of the goods and services and goods and uh, 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 receivables hypothecated could actually go up, could actually go, go up in such a way that their value is much higher than the pre-sanctioned limit. But that does not mean that the limits will be changed. The limits will be restricted to the pre-sanctioned limits at all times. In other words, if the value of the goods and uh, receivables hypothecated, let's go back to the example of uh, 25 lakh rupee uh, cash credit limit. If the value of the goods and services, uh, goods and um, uh, receivables hypothecated to the bank, let's say becomes 50 lakh rupees also, then also the balance available to the customer to draw from the account will not exceed 25 lakhs. It will remain at 25 lakhs only. It cannot go above the pre-sanction limit. That is what I mean by when I said here that even if the value of the hypothecated goods go up above the limit sanction, the limit will be restricted to the pre sanct limits only. It will not go up. One major important feature of a cash credit account is that in hypothecation for cash credit, the goods, raw materials or work in process or finished goods are in possession of the customer only. It is not in the possession of the bank. It is in possession of the customer only. It will be the customer's. It will be in the customer's premises. That means the customer will have a factory. Let us, let us assume a manufacturing unit. The customer will have a factory. Uh, he will have a go down which will stock raw materials. He will have a go down which will stock uh, semi finished goods. He will also have a go down which will stock finished goods. So the entire stock of the products are in his possession possession only. But the only thing is that they are always kept under lock and key, the one key of which is with the bank. The customer will of course have all the possession of all these things with him. But the difference is that, but the main point is that he cannot go and open the go down whenever he wants to and just take out the raw materials of finished goods uh, or the semi-finished goods because the, bank, the, the customer will have to keep them in a place which is under lock and key the lock will have two keys, one of which will be kept with the bank and the other key will be with the customer. When the goods or the semi-finished or the finished goods are to be released, the bank staff will open the lock. She or she from the bank will actually visit the go down of the customer and open the lock along with the customer. Then only the goods can be released. And of course, the main criteria is that the account should be within the limit. That means he should have enough drawing power. We discussed what is a drawing power. So the account should have enough, we should be well within the limits. That means that sufficient drawing power should be there. As long as sufficient drawing power is there, then the customer will ask the bank staff or will request the bank staff to come and open the lock so that he can dispatch, let's say a finished product from the go down to his buyer. That is how the system of uh, unlocking the hypothecated goods happens. He cannot unlock it on his own. It has to be unlocked with the help of the bank staff with the key which the bank staff will bring with him or her and open the lock subject of course to the fact that the account is within the permissible limit and that he has got enough drawing power. At the place where these goods are stocked or the place where these goods are stored, a prominent notice is put up saying that the goods are under hypothecation to X bank. For example, let us talk uh, of uh, Bank of Baroda. 
for example if the company has been financed by bank of baroda then at the godowns of the raw materials the semi finished goods and the finished goods it will a prominent notice will be put up saying that goods in this godown are under hypothecation to bank of baroda even in the receivables when the customer raises a bill on his buyer he will have to state that the receivable is under hypothecation to bank of baroda and to that extent all payments which you need to pay me should be made in the name of bank of baroda only not to my account directly it should be going into the cash credit account only and not to the current account of the uh, uh, customer uh, current account of the borrower why this notice is put up in the godowns the reason is very simple the goods hypothecated to one bank cannot be hypothecated to any other bank in other words double financing is not allowed double or triple financing is not allowed unless of course it goes through what is known as a consortium arrangement a consortium arrangement is one where more than one bank comes together and finances a company a consortium of, a consortium is a group of banks come together and finance a very large corporate loan i will give you the example of uh, a very large corporate loan it could be like for example the example of mrf the tire manufacturing company mrf is a very large company and uh, it has got manufacturing units in different places the volume of sales run into thousands of crores and similarly the volume of the cash credit loan also runs into thousands of crores it is not possible and neither is it advisable for one bank to take such a big exposure of assuming that mrf cash credit limit today is let's say 15000 crores i actually do not know the exact uh, limit but i'm just giving an example uh, knowing from the fact that i was was once the credit appraisal of mrf limited when i used to work in a bank during the earlier stages of my career i can confidently say that mrf cash credit limits will be now running into a few thousands of crores so let's say for example mrf limit is now 15000 crores 15000 crores it is not it is neither advisable nor possible for one bank to take exposure to one company of such a big magnitude in that case the company call, the, the bank calls for a consortium that means a group of banks a group of banks led by one particular bank will come in and form a consortium a consortium is an arrangement by which by which a group of banks comes together and forms a lending arrangement so that they all have equal rights in the goods hypothecated which means that the leader of the consortium as he is called uh, when i talk of mrf uh, the bank for which i used to work was the leader of the consortium the leader of the consortium takes the responsibility for running of this account as per the mandate contained in the order given or the sanction given so at that time it is not possible for mrf to put up a notice saying that goods under hypothecation to x bank only so they they will put a, they will put up a notice saying this is under hypothecation to a consortium of banks led by x bank so that is when the goods are uh, although the goods are kept in one go down they are hypothecated to more than one bank as far as the last time i knew mrf had a consortium of about 25 banks so that means 25 banks have an equal stake in the hypothecation of the goods which have been hypothecated the lead bank or the leader of the consortium only takes responsibility for day to day running of the account of the company and once in a while a consortium meeting happens when all these banks come together meet up and decide on whether the account is being running run properly whether all the documents necessary have been submitted whether the documents are in order and currently in force and whether the bank whether, whether the company uh, uh, adheres to all the rules and regulations of the consortium arrangement that is the difference so this is how a cash credit limit i mean this is how a cash credit account operates i have told you the entire uh, scenario of a cash credit account how it is sanctioned a credit appraisal system is followed how what is hypothecation hypothecation is nothing but uh, giving the goods on 
there is a small difference between hypothecation and pledge, which I'll come to a little later. Let's, uh, let's for this moment understand that the goods are hypothecated to the bank. It could be either a single bank or a consortium of bankers. I have also told you what is the drawing power. I have told you what is, I mean, how the uh, bank, how the company can re release its goods from its go down with the request given to the bank. They will come and open the lock f for which they have another key and they will come and open the lock in the presence of the customer and the, the, the entire thing is registered and recorded in what is known as a stock register. A stock register will actually maintain, will actually uh, detail the day-to-day -day balance of the various goods in the go-down of the company, whether it's a raw material or semi-finished goods or a finished goods, it will contain the exact balance. So when the customer, uh, when the borrower buys raw materials and wants to store them inside the go-down, he, 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 uh, he or she will increase the balance in the raw materials column in the stock register. Similarly, when the customer sells finished goods to his buyers, and the finished goods are taken out of the go-down, the stock register will show a reduction in the balance of the finished goods. So a stock register is maintained for this purpose and the drawing power is ba based on the limit sanction minus the margin power subject to the uh, validity of the limits being there and subject to the uh, hypothecated goods values being equal to or more than the predetermined limit. That is, the, uh, that is how the drawing power is calculated and I have told you the entire gamut of the cash credit operations and uh, I hope you, this video was useful to you and until I see you again in the next video uh, on a different topic, please bye from me for now. Uh, I will see you again in the next video very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.